Geil! <clears throat> Guys, how's it going? Thank you for stopping by again. Today I come to you with a dilemma. I have these two watches here. Very nice watches from the 20s. Very good watches. They, um, they created a big impact in their era, but now these watches in the market, they're dead. There's uh, nothing to do with them. Nobody wants them. There's there's virtually zero market for these, uh, you know, Art Deco, pre-Art Deco watches. So I'm in a dilemma here. I'm one of the guys that uh, I say in a lot of my videos, I'm going to fix it because I can. But at the end of the day, I got to make a living also. So I was looking at these two watches. I have all the parts. I have all the parts to fix them. It's just a matter of time. Time is very limited. So what would you guys do? So let me show you guys first of all. This is a little vintage Bulova from the 20s. As you can see, very nice watch. Believe it or not, this watch takes a 20, milli 20 millimeter uh, strap. And the watch is actually, let me see if I can measure it here. 32 millimeters by... 32 millimeters. So I know a lot of people will not wear this watch. Now this watch is all original. You can see the blued hands and it's just a nice watch all around. You can see the numbers here are applied numbers. Very nice watch. And even the case back has a nice little curve to it. It has a hinged uh, back case because back in the day before uh, Rolex created the Oyster, uh, everybody was fighting with the water. So this is one of the cases that was made in, I could say three parts, because actually the whole movement comes up in one part with its own case, as you can see here. See, I'll show you guys. The movement is out, and it's got its own case. A glass, a exhibition case back, and you would have the move, the other outer case like this. So. It was a very, very good engineering back then. They were trying to fight water to uh, make them as water resistant as they could. So like I said, this this watch needs a uh, mainspring and it might need a balance staff as well. And it's going to need a service at the end of the day. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to need a few hours worth of work for no money out of it. So that's my dilemma. Do I fix it as a collector, which I already have plenty of watches that I've been collecting. And because I know that all the time and all the money I put into this watch, there's not a dime that I'm going to get back. Uh, I don't think there's anybody out there that would give me uh, $350 for this watch, $400 once it's all fixed and ready to go. And honestly, I, at the end of the day, it's a $120, $130 watch. That's watch number one. Watch number two, it is a Waltham, but a Waltham Sapphire. You can see here in the back case, it also has a little bit of a curvature. Now this one is not as advanced as the other one. I'll open it up. I'm looking, there we go. And you could see the movement, it's a, it's got a lot of work in that one. It's just a beautiful, beautiful movement. Now talk about a beautiful movement, guys. Look at this. Even the work right here in the middle, just a beautiful, beautiful movement. These movements were basically made out of pocket watches and they were trying to convert into um, wrist watches. So again, this watch, I know it, I don't, I don't know if it needs a mainspring. I know it needs a balance staff and I know it needs a crown and a staff too. So I have the parts to fix it, but again, the time. And once it's fixed, how much is this watch worth? So um, I'm, you know, thinking as a collector, but I'm also thinking as a uh, watch dealer. So a lot of you guys could say, well, fix one, fix one and just uh, throw the other one into the parts bin. But I don't know. I would like to fix them both. So what do you guys think? Would you guys f pay for somebody to fix these watches? knowing that your value is not going to be in there because these watches are more or less worthless. Uh, there's no, there's not a lot of collectors left out there for these uh, small watches. Tell me what you guys think. So this is one of the videos that I have a lot of questions for you guys. Let me know and I will let you know in a future video if I fix them or I just throw them into the parts bin. Thanks a lot guys for stopping by. I appreciate it and I'll catch you guys in the next one.